got those. So, <laughs> you know when like you learn more and more as you like, well, I mean, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but like when you start a YouTube channel, you learn more and more every single day. And like between the editing and the filming and everything, guess what I just learned? I learned you can change the format of your filming. So now I'm filming in 4K 60, which it looks totally different <laughs> so that's crazy but welcome back so today today i have a good plan so i want to get right into like the the like the juice of what i wanted to do this channel all about in the first place right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be making up um on this video with you guys i'm going to be making up uh one of my signature mixed pots that are um like my companion planting mixed pots because like I absolutely love doing that. And um, it looks, to me, it just looks so much more put together. It looks so much more like a statement piece. Like like it, you like you put some effort into it and you put some thought into it because I mean, it really does take a lot of thought because are the plants going to work together? Um, are they gonna thrive together? Are they just gonna survive? And, and in reality, we don't really know we know what ones will work together because like of the care conditions or whatnot, but no one's really doing this. No one's really putting all of these in a pot and being like, let's see if it works. So let's go do it. Cause that's what, that's what I want to do today. So let me take you outside, show you the potting area that I do and um, that I do all my stuff on. And yeah, let's get to work. So follow me. Okay guys, so this is my little potting area that I have sectioned off here at the house. And um, yeah, so we've got a little thing here that I got. I got this like little rack at like a yard sale a couple years ago for like $5, best thing I ever got. And um, I keep my empty pots on here and then um, as I need them, I fill them up. And then here is Actually, this antique thing from clearly Japan, which I didn't see that first, but um, I got this actually piece from um, a friend of mine that had passed away, Glenna. She's such a sweet lady. Um, she left that to me in her will. She had it outside and I always told her I really loved it. So um, yeah, so I got to take that home and I'm going to make it a really pretty planter. Um, I've had it as a planter before, but um, through all the moving and stuff it's just found its way out here right now so so yeah so there's a bunch of stuff i got my my jack-o-lantern uh terracotta that we're gonna do something for around halloween we do a lot of halloween themed stuff as well um this fall so it'll be fun uh we got my 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 large uh very large pot of potting soil and it's just a, a mixture of of leca potting soil um, charcoal um, it's just got everything in there. Everything you need for aeroids. Um, there's a bunch of myco, everything. Uh, then we got the plants here that we're gonna be putting up in a pot today. Uh, we have got down here the, uh, what is this? Small leaf Mullenbeckia, Mullenbeckia. I love that. I think it's so really pretty. Like it just adds like a little touch to the plant. Um, and then right here we have, this is such a pretty plant, it's just a regular, Hoya Carnosa, but this was given to me um, a couple of years ago by my very best friend. And it comes from a plant that's over a hundred years old, which I think is pretty awesome. It's got a lot of history to it. And I love plants like that. Like something that has a story to it and comes from someone that like, that, you know, that wanted to give you a plant that, that they cared about. I love that. So I, I keep that near and dear to me. And that's why I'm potting this up in this little friendship pot. Um, and then we have here, we have what is left of my Anthurium palidiflorum. But look, it's got two new growth points starting off right there. And um, yeah, this was given to me by what someone that I thought was a friend, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, and then we're also going to add the Anthurium sp morona into this mix and see how that works out too. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about all that. So let's get started. Um, here's the pot we're gonna be putting it in. This handmade pottery that I got at the Habitat for Humanity. And um, this is my little, <laughs> my little unique filmy thing. So let's get started. All right, guys, so let's get started. We have a sign here, don't stop, never quit. Obviously. <laughs> not everyone really, uh, not everyone knows that. 
some people need to hear that message so anyway here we go um first and foremost we're gonna look through here the anthurium palette of florum that was sent to me from uh from a friend before um i love this plant so much and i'm gonna i just chopped it back because all the leaves um when it came in it came in in january like during that um during that whole uh what's it called like the what's it called the winter vortex or whatever the heck so we need to cut this but i'm gonna make sure i'm like showing you guys on camera <laughs> I have a hard time with my hand holding this all right so let me just trim this up gotta go some of these roots would just be fine too I don't know I don't know I don't know okay I'm not even showing you guys this, sorry. So I just chopped off all the roots. So basically all of them except these two. Um, I don't even know if they're viable. I'm just gonna leave them in there just to have something. So yeah, so this is the Anthurium palette of flora. I just wanna get that ready. Um, let me switch that aside. And then <clears throat> go ahead and get this pot. So see, now you see why are my fingers always stuck with, uh, with stuff? Because <laughs> I just do this all the time. I'm always in my plants, always, always, always. And then I wonder why, oh, look. There's a Raphidophora decursiva node up in here. <laughs> oh, well. Um, okay. So put that there. I think probably need a little more. Okay, so look at all these like these nodes of these plants I'm just finding in the dirt. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just throw it in there, like how I put all these plants in here, I just throw them in there. Sometimes I'll leave them in there and whatever. They last, they last. <laughs> Alright, anyway, so got some of this in here. Let's stick the pally right around here. You know what? No no no. Let's start with the Morona, just because this is gonna be the main centerpiece. The Pally will go in next to it. Cause when that grows in, it'll be perfectly, um, did you see the difference of the leaves? And so here's the Anthea Morona. Let me get some of this out actually. And this guy's pushing on a new leaf, check that out. So I place this baby in right here, just like that. And go in with the nest to get on top. And I am not, look, I am not easy with my plants. Like I am not careful, I'm not like, Oh my gosh, it's gonna die if you handle it all hard. That's not, that's not me. That's just, it's fine, it's a plant, it'll grow as long as you give it what it needs. Um, <clears throat> so, put the pally right here. That way they kind of intertwine, right? So this one will come out this way and this way. Um, I think that'll be a good idea. So let's go ahead and put that there. And that soil center on there, something like that. Oh, it looks beautiful. I think that looks so cute, right? But it's not even done yet. No, no, no. So, 
Next up, we're gonna put in um, the, oh, I should put this in first. Oh, no, no, no. Let's just do it like this. We're gonna tuck in these roots because these roots on the Mulembechia, they're kind of long. And I'm gonna, I wanna separate this to where it's like half on that and half on that, like this. Oh, perfect. Love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay. Now it's not done yet. Don't judge yet, don't judge yet. I feel you judging me. Kind of the same thing. Can I put this one in here right behind that one? Okay. And then I got this pretty little guy. Sure that I'm weaving in, weaving the uh, Mulembechia in and out so it gives it that like lacy kind of pretty little leaves falling look when it's all said and done in the end. And we have the one more piece. Get your, don't get all like set on that because <clears throat> I'm gonna look at this for a while and I'm gonna be like, okay, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, and I'm probably gonna move stuff around like this one. Clearly, that doesn't work like that. I don't like it. It doesn't work. <clears throat> this one, I'm gonna wanna loop under here. See, I'm not even seeing if I'm showing you this right. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know if I like that at all. What the French toast? No, no, no. Come out. All of this. All of this has got to go. All right. You, sir, will be last. You, sir, are done. All right. Now let's start over. These babies are perfect right here, right? Okay. So let's go on and do this. Yes, mama. That looks good like that. underneath it. We'll see. We shall see. Mm. Yeah, like that. So, let's go ahead and move some dirt here. 
it's not even dirt, I don't want to call it dirt, but it's soil, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Put that in there like that. See how full that looks, how pretty. Then I think I am gonna put this one down here. So, maybe I'll take you out for just a moment. it's looking a lot better now like i mean you're seeing it from a different angle but i'll show you once it's all said and done oh, lots of leaf um yeah let's just go ahead and do that so you have like most of the hoya coming from this well it's pretty much all coming from this side we can put the mulembeckia from back here um that way that the roots stay kind of in the same vicinity within each other I'm not really concerned about roots choking each other out or plants choking each other out. To me, it's just gonna create that environment where they, it looks like a little jungle, you know? Like, I love that. Like, that's like my favorite part about house plants is that it looks like you took a little piece of the jungle out and, and put it into your house. And when you put them in a pot, it doesn't necessarily look like that for the most part. So like, I took it upon myself to be like, well, you can make it look like that. So, that's what we're doing here, in essence, pretty much. Um, okay, so put this guy right in here. And I'm gonna put some more soil on here, so don't worry. Not soil, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean, the mix. Okay. All right, I think that looks so pretty. Okay, adjust it. roots and this soil is pretty much um it's pretty much damp here i'll show you <clears throat> like it's got a lot of perlite it's got a lot of volcanic rock it's got a lot of leca um it's got pond in here it's got everything charcoal big charcoal Hey guys, sorry about that. Um, I did not realize that the phone was gonna overheat and then say that it needed to cool down before um, continuing. So that is why it kind of abruptly stopped. But I wanna show ahead, I wanna go ahead and show you guys um, the final, the final um, outcome of what we did. So let me show you. So here is my friendship pot. <laughs> um, this actually, the Mulenbeckia was given to me um, by the owner of Camelot Gardens in Montrose, Colorado. I absolutely love that nursery. Um, it's it's so fun to go there. Like the, the ladies that work there are absolutely beautiful and like they're beautiful inside. Like 
Hold on. Okay. So here is my friendship pot. And the reason I call it friendship pot is A, because my best friend gave me the the uh, the Carnosa that you see up here. And it's like a hundred year, year old plant, like I said um, earlier. But also the new Lebecchia was given to me as a gift from the owner of Camelot Gardens in Montrose, Colorado. Uh, one of my favorite little nurseries. I absolutely, it's really little, but it's so, I love it. I love it. It's really fun. I really think you guys should go over there and check it out. Um, it really saved me, you know, in a time of my healing, um, on my journey, um, you know, coming back into everything, um, into life and everything. So, so yeah. Um, and then the SP Barona, I absolutely love this plant. Um, the Anthurium Wind Lingri, or not Wind Lingrii, the Anthurium Pallidiflorum is also in here. You can't really see it, but when it actually comes out, it'll be so pretty because it'll be like one leaf coming this way, one leaf coming that way on either side of the Morona. Then the Morona will come out. And then when they get their more mature leaves, the uh, the leaves look completely different from each other. And it's just going to look fantastic. So I'm excited to see this, um, you know, fill out a little more. I mean, it's kind of full, but like, I mean, spill out. I'm looking forward to spill out. <laughs> so yeah. So this is my um, my friendship pot. So I just want to show you guys, give you a taste of what it is that I do for my plants. Um, I just kind of throw them all together and um, put them in a place that looks beautiful like this. I'll show you. Ta-da! Look how beautiful that looks. And come on, you cannot even. Do you love it? Um, so leave a comment down below because I want to know like what ideas do you have for um, multi-planting? Because I have a lot of plants that I want to show you guys um, that I've already done. I want to do a lot more. Um, I don't really have room for more. So like I'm probably going to do them up and give them to people, give them to friends, uh, maybe sell them. I don't know. We'll see. So stay, uh, stay tuned for the next one. But I just wanted to throw this video out today so you could see and get a little bit of taste of like what it is that I do my plants and I do like multi-planting like this and there's another one here I love it I simply love it so I hope you love it too and we'll talk to you later ciao for now